Good evening. I greet you this precious evening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. And I thank God for the opportunity for us to gather together over these airwaves and even hear the word of God. It has become the norm these days, but we thank God for the opportunity. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that uh, this evening you may speak to us through your word, that even as it goes forth to your servants who are hearing from various uh, parts of our parish and beyond, and um, let your word have a place in them. Holy Spirit of the living God, you're the master teacher and evangelist. Use me as a vessel of honor as I share your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have been focusing in the last uh, several Wednesdays about um, cultivating friendship with God through various means. Uh, from today, I want us to turn to the book of Proverbs, and uh, we want to embark on a study of the book of Proverbs every Wednesday. And uh, from this study, we want to glean uh, from um, the, the Proverbs, the insights that are there of wisdom that will anchor us in our faith in God, as well as aid us in navigating successfully through the labyrinth of uh, challenges that life brings to us each and every day. And um, starting with the, the issue of authorship, who was the author of the book of Proverbs? From Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, the writer is identified as Solomon, the son of David, who was king of Israel. And um, of Solomon, the Bible records that he had wisdom bestowed upon him from the Lord that was extraordinary, that far surpassed those who were before him, and even those who came after him. Can you get that from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 12? Uh, from Solomon, he gives us several purposes of the Proverbs. That when you study the pro Proverbs, they have several purposes. One of them is to know wisdom and instruction. The second is to perceive the words of understanding. Thirdly, to receive the instruction of wisdom, which are wisdom, justice, and judgment. Fourthly, to receive instruction on prudent behavior. That is doing what is right, just, and fair. Fifthly, they give insight, uh, smartness uh, to the inexperienced and discretion or knowledge to the youth. Sixthly, the study of the Proverbs. Those who are wise increase learning and those who have understanding, they gain counsel. So today, from the uh, book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, we want to focus on one thing we can learn from it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does this statement mean? The chief thing that is that this wisdom cannot be attained by any individual who does not have the fear of the Lord in him. So therefore, a question to pose is this. What do we mean by wisdom? From a biblical standpoint, wisdom is the abilities granted by God to people in different aspects of life. One example would be craftsmanship, such as that that was given to two people in the Old Testament who are expressly named in the book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 1, following. These were Bezalel and Aholiab. These were able to make all the items that the Lord had commanded Moses to make for the tent of meeting where God would meet with his people. And I want you to note that uh, these things were things they had never seen before in their lives but they were able to make them perfectly, such as the Ark of the Covenant and the cherubims or angelic beings whose wings covered the mercy seat above the Ark. The second uh, issue about wisdom is that wisdom is knowledge and understanding to decide rightly. And an example would be King Solomon himself, who was able to decide between two women of questionable character who were fighting over a live boy they, each was accusing the other that um, your, your child is the dead one. Mine is the one who is alive. So Solomon, using the wisdom that God had given him, was able to judge between the two of them and um, was able to know how to discern the rightful mother of the child and restore the child to its mother. You can get that, that in the book of First Kings, chapter 3, verse 16 through 28. When Solomon made this judgment, historic in nature, the reaction of his uh, people was this, that they feared the king 
For they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. For God to bequeath Solomon this, with this wisdom, what had transpired? Did Solomon fear the Lord? In the book of 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, this is what it says of him. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father. Thereafter, Solomon went to a high place that was at Gibeon, and he offered a thousand burnt offerings at that altar. Later that night, the Lord appeared to him in a dream and, and said, ask what I shall give to you. And what a privilege. Solomon asked for wisdom. He did not ask for, for gold. He did not ask for riches. He asked for wisdom. So he had touched the heart of God. And um, he was offering these sacrifices with an intent to please the Lord. He was not asking for silver or gold, but for a wise and understanding heart. And this, my friends, was granted to him. It was granted to him. On another occasion, Solomon offered 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep as burnt offerings to the Lord, leading to the Lord appearing to him a second time at the dedication of the temple. First Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, it is plainly clear that the wisdom granted to Solomon was because of his fearing the Lord. A question then to pose to you and I, do you fear the Lord? Do your decisions reflect that fear? If yes, then you and I can boldly come to the Lord and ask for wisdom, and he will graciously grant it to us. If we genuinely love the Lord, he will be willing to bestow upon us his best gifts, wisdom included. And uh, to retain that wisdom of the Lord, it is important to always be in that mode of fearing the Lord. Moreover, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. So if I fear the Lord, I will hate what is wrong in his sight. Such as what the Lord, the, this word says, I, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and the perverse mouth. That is the mouth that speaks lies. So you cannot say that you and I fear the Lord if you constantly do what is obnoxious in his sight. May God help you and I to genuinely fear him and thereby acquire the wisdom that comes from him. Unfortunately, Solomon in his old age veered off the path of the fear of the Lord. How did this come about? The Bible says that he had many wives and these wives turned his heart away from God. That is when they began to coerce him to build for them altars of the gods from the lands in which he had brought them from. First Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 8. And this caused the Lord to become angry with Solomon and raise up adversaries for Solomon, leading eventually that in the, in the subsequent kingdom of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was split into two. All this is as a result of somebody veering away from the Lord. This is a caution to you and to me who love the Lord, not to become ambivalent in our walk with him, rather to stick to the ways of the Lord and to cleave to him unwaveringly. This will ensure that his wisdom also remains with you and his favor also remains with you. That shall be even manifested even to the generations that are ahead of you and I. This is but one nugget that we can glean uh, from, um, from the, the, this, the, the Proverbs. And I believe as we co continue with this journey of walking through the Proverbs, that we shall learn many, many more things, such as what we have learned today, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, the Bible also says that and a good understanding have all those who keep his commandments. Therefore, my friend, cultivate that fear of the Lord and his wisdom shall be yours to have with those few or many words. Have a blessed evening as you contemplate all these words. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you because you say that your word shall never return to you void, rather it shall accomplish what your purpose for it. Help us, O oh Lord, even to glean from your word even nuggets of, of wisdom, of counsel, of understanding, and such as what you have spoken to us this evening about, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Help us even to walk in your fear. As you have also told us uh, to, 
To fear the Lord is to hate evil. Help us to hate everything that is obnoxious in your sight. Whatever that you point to us as being wrong, help us even to shunt it aside and thereby walk in ways that are pleasing before you. And when this happens, O oh Father, may it please you to continue to bestow us upon us your wisdom, your discernment, and your, your ability even to do great and marvelous things that shall bring glory to your name. Hear this our prayer of faith. For it is in your name, Jesus Christ, we do pray, trust, believe, and give thanks. Amen and amen.